He's sitting on 714. Here's the pitch by Downing. Swinging. There's a drive into left center field. That ball is going to be out of here. It's gone. It's 715. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Hank Aaron's one of the most admirable people in the history of American sports, let alone baseball. A great, great player. Most home runs in history, most RBIs in history by 300, third in all-time hits behind Rose and Cobb. Throw out all of his home runs, he's still got 3,000 hits. He was class, class personified. All he did was put that uniform on, gave it 100% day in and day out. He's not only a Hall of Famer in baseball, he's a Hall of Famer in class. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony is a moment the last weekend of July. My first week on the job was Nolan Ryan, George Brett, Robin Yount, and Orlando Cepeda. And through that receiving line is coming every hero of my childhood. Uh, Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, Al Kaline, Harmon Killebrew, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson, uh, Stan Musial, Willie Mays. I'm about as lucky a guy as, uh, as anybody I know. More than 200 of baseball's immortals are enshrined in the Hall of Fame. And that is less than 1% of all men who have ever put on a uniform and played Major League Baseball. And to stand in that plaque gallery and see the plaques of those men, to me, is magical. I walked in that room, and it's, uh, it's mind-boggling to me to know that the spirit of all the greatest players who ever lived was in that room at one time. And I stood there for a long period of time just by myself. It was just, it was just magnificent because it just seemed like I was there with all these guys. You know, Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, all those guys are the greatest players. And they're not arranged alphabetically, so you got to look a little bit for your favorite player. You get a little surge of excitement when you finally discover his plaque on the wall. Johnny Bench, who was a teammate of mine. Willie Stargell from my hometown. He was from Oakland, and we were friends. Nellie Fox because as a kid growing up, Nellie Fox and Jackie Robinson were my idols. In 1972, Morgan joined the Big Red Machine with Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, Pete Rose, and his double play partner, shortstop, Dave Concepcion. The Cincinnati Reds dominated the 70s with four World Series appearances and two wins. In game six of the 75 World Series, Red Sox Carlton Fisk blasted a winning home run the Sox were now tied with Cincinnati going into the final game. I wasn't big, strong, powerful. I had to learn the nuances of the game. I had to do little things to make me a better player, to make me important to my team. With two outs in the top of the ninth, Joe Morgan stepped to the plate and broke the hearts of the Sox fans. The death blow, a simple single, sent teammate Ken Griffey home to score the winning run for the Cincinnati Reds. I would have played baseball forever if I could, but you can't. He had power. He had the greatest self-confidence when he walked up to the plate, and that's why he became a Hall of Famer. Joe Morgan was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1990. Basically, I said, the only thing that could make this a better day is if Jackie Robinson was sitting there and Nellie Fox. I said, other than that, this is a perfect day. Again, those two guys had a big effect on the fact that I was even standing there that particular day. They all feel that way, that how, do I, how did I get here and find myself with a plaque on the wall next to uh, Ted Williams and Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron and Willie Mays and all the great players of history. I think I'm always going to have problems trying to say Mays, Musial, and Morgan in the same breath. <laughs> <laughs>